What's up guys, Jaxel here. Earlier in the year, I uh, released a tutorial and script explaining how I do my scoreboards and all the overlays and assets I do on my stream and how it's very simple to do with HTML and JavaScript, not having to use any sort of Flash or ActionScript or knowing any of the advanced uh, languages involved with uh, you know, like Flash or whatnot. Anyways, um, I've since updated a lot of these scripts. Um, the reason being, if uh, you've ever downloaded the assets from this tutorial, you'll notice that all the assets are in images, and the images I include are white. Uh, so if you want to change anything, like the colors of your scoreboard bars, you need to open up Photoshop and edit it. And I don't know about you guys, but I'm not a graphic artist. Um, I do all the streams by myself. I don't really get any help from anybody. And that's just too much for me to do. So I, I don't want to really do that. I want to be able to change the colors in text, which is why I've rewritten everything to be based on uh, CSS3, HTML, and JavaScript. And what it does is it allows me to change all my bars um, without ever having to open up Photoshop. So let's see what we got here. We've got my new scoreboard, at least this is the scoreboard I'm going to be releasing in my next tutorial. Um, and with this scoreboard, it's uh, like before, it's just a basic HTML web page. Everything's right here. And everything is controlled by two CSS files. Uh, we have my global, which is the base things. And then we have the versus.css, which is just for this screen. Uh, to show how this works, block height 60 pixels is how high or how big I want uh, this entire bar to be. If I lower it to 40, let me refresh. Uh, you'll see that, hey, now the bar is only 40 pixels in height. And you should have also noticed that nice animation. Now that nice animation is built entirely in CSS3 running through JavaScript. Um, gutter width is just a distance of white in between each bar. Uh, match width is the size of the, of the match. Score width are the size of these. Now the size of the player bars is a calculation based on the uh, body width, which is 1600, and that's the global variable minus the match width, minus the two score widths, and then it places them in those divisions in between at the right size. Score offset is where these starts, in which case it's 240 pixels out from its initial position, which is off the screen. Uh, I do my uh, streams in 1080p, which is 1920 by 1080, which is why my body width is 1600. Uh, chances are you probably stream in 720p, which is 1280 by 720. And if that's the case, you probably want to change your body width to 1000 if you want to use the scoreboard. Um, now, you'll also notice that these uh, arrows... These arrows are controlled by a tangent value. Tangent is basically the de uh, calculated degrees of slant, and I have it set to 0.4. If I wanted to change it, let's say let's change it to 1.4. You're going to get see the uh, slants get pretty intense. There you go. That's that's pretty strong. Uh, that that's way too strong. So I'm going to set it back to 0.4. Keep it at that. It's much better that way. Looks nice. Point four. That that's what I plan on using on my streams. Okay. Now, uh, in this global file, uh, now the reason why certain variables are in global while some are all, are only in versus.css is because these variables only uh, affect this specific page, while this global.css uh, these variables will affect all my pages, all my different screens, because I want a unified theme going on all my panels. So colors should match across the entire system, fonts and whatnot. So you're going to see border color, main color, main color two, main color three. This is main color one. This is main color two. This is main color three. And the border is the border. Now it's called border, but it's actually background. It exists behind these bars. Uh, so it's kind of a misnomer. I'm just going to keep calling it border, though. Uh, the border is black, 
with a 50% opacity, which is why it looks gray. Uh, main color three is white with a 50 cent opacity, which is why it looks like a lighter gray. Uh, main color one is red, and this one is, I guess, uh, blue green, which I guess would be teal. I don't know. Anyways, so let's say I wanted to change this color. Let's change it to purple. And now let's refresh, and you're going to see that all the player names have backgrounds have changed to purple. Nice. Very easy. You can change colors in text, no Photoshop required. And in fact, you want to go a little crazier, you can do that. This is a variable. Uh, right now it's set to an RGP, RGBA value. You can change it to an image value if you are so inclined to go back to using images. Um, now if you want to continue using text, there's some pretty cool things you can do. So I'm going to go linear gradient. Let's uh, get rid of that. Uh, I'm going to go um, from right to, no, from left to right. Uh, let's see, I want it to end that purple, become a blue green, and then go back to purple again. This is how a gradient works. And now when we refresh, you're going to see a nice gradient. Well, it's not, not going to be a nice gradient. It's going to be an ugly gradient, but I'm using it as an example. All the colors I'm showing here are just for example's sake. These are not the colors I would be using on my actual stream. Now, if you search uh, Google, you can find some nice ways to do interesting backgrounds in just text. But this is some basic stuff. All right, I'm going to change it all back. Back to my test values. Okay, now... Other variables we got here are the speeds of all the animations, the font information, the different sizes, the shadows. You really shouldn't have to change much. Now, I have icons down here. The icons determine uh, what icons appear. So, for instance, you see a Twitter icon right there. That's based on this Twitter icon right here. You're also seeing some backgrounds in the back. So I have the 8-Way Run logo here, the Empire Arcadia logo there. Um, let's, nope, let's change some things. So instead of that, let's show uh, Shock from Combat Network. This should update soon. There we go. And now you see the Combat Network logo. Now you're probably asking, hey, why does it have to be team logos? Can I do flags instead? Well, yes, you can. And I've already put in a series of flags by default. Uh, if you want to add more flags, you just edit this file and add the flags. And I have the images of flags here, some of them. But let's, before we do that, let's uh, change some s small values so that the flags look nicer. Make it so the uh, flags are 100% opacity instead of 50%. Let's uh, change this one to the flag of United Kingdom versus the flag of USA. And click refresh. There we go. UK flag, American flag. Very easy. And as it's just put in anything after the pipe is what's going to be set up for that image. Very simple. Now, with how simple this is, you can actually make it more complicated. So, if we look at this match display right here, this is a six-point polygon, which would be in hexagon. One point here, two, three, four, five, and six, and those are outlined with one, two, three, four, five, and six. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this basic hexagon shape into a dodecahedron, a 12-pointed polygon, which starts the same way, gets a step, goes to another step, and then finishes its final position in step three. So it goes from uh, no view, step one, step two, step three, and what you're going to end up with is this. Now the flags look different, 
full look weird because I didn't do the styling for those flags. I did the styling for uh, for these. I already showed how to change the styling so that the flags look nicer, though. But I mainly did it for the team view. Now, with those polygonal shapes and those steps, you're going to see step one, step two, and then step three. Now let's watch that again. All in CSS, nice animations. Step one, step two, step three. Now this script right here, this versus 2.html, I will not be including in the script because this is what I'm going to be using for my own personal use. You'll be getting versus this straight up versus HTML. And it's just, this is what it is. If, if you want to make it more complicated, you can do it yourself. Try to give your own unique view to it. This is my unique view for my streams. So, but you get this, it's nice. You're also going to be getting this caster screen. Caster screen works pretty much the exact same way as the versus screen. I have my casters down here. And everything comes up. And just like before, there's animations. Everything is updated every five seconds. You have the player screen, which works pretty much exactly the same way as the caster screen. So let's ignore it for now. And if we put it all together in OBS, this is that one. Let's look at this one. Got event information at the bottom. And I don't know about you guys, but that shit looks nice. <laughs> Anyways, very simple. Uh, you just put it in as an HTML page. You set your sizes and whatnot. And it's just it's just there. It's, it's an HTML page. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoy this script. I'll be uploading it to OBS Project soon. Uh, you'll be noticed that I use both OBS and... Uh, XSplit on this recording. Uh, right now, this script works great in OBS. It does not yet work in XSplit. Uh, XSplit is still using an outdated version of uh, Chrome as its uh, web renderer. Uh, so until it updates to the newer versions of Chrome in its uh, HTML renderer, uh, it won't work. Right now, it's using Chrome 47. It needs at least Chrome 49. Uh, but I have been told that the next an upcoming version of XSplit will be upgrading to a new version of Chrome. So this script will work in Chrome soon. Anyways, peace out guys. Hope you enjoy.